I wanted to start, and I kind of found this this morning, um, one of my heroes is a guy named Voltaire. Um, and I actually named my son after Voltaire. His middle name is Voltaire. But he said, if we believe absurdities, then we shall commit atrocities, um, which I think is a, a powerful statement because I think that right there sums up the entire um, animal agriculture community. We have to believe the absurdity that you know there's nothing being harmed and nothing wrong going on in order for the atrocities to be committed. And he also said another thing that I thought was really powerful because it speaks right to this issue, and this is a man living um, born in the 1600s, lived into the 1700s, but he said, people must have renounced, it seems to me, all natural intelligence to dare to advance that animals are but animated machines. It appears to me, besides that, that such people can never have observed with attention the character of animals, not to have distinguished among them the different voices of need, of suffering, of joy, of pain, of love, of anger, and of all their affections. It would be very strange that they should express so well what they could not feel. And I think for Voltaire to have seen this back then, for him to realize that animals clearly express all these emotions. We, we see it day in and day out in interacting, whether it be with your dog or whether it be with a pig. You see them expressing all these feelings, these thoughts, exactly as humans do. And for him to make that point, that if they express these things, it would be bizarre to think that they don't actually feel these things. So, now to what I started originally intending to say. I wanted to talk about, um, I guess, sort of who I am, but maybe more importantly, why I became what I am. Um, I haven't always been an animal activist. Um, my journey in animal activism started when my dad died at the age of 63 um, of heart-related stuff. I don't think they really know exactly, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what caused it. Um, I was 34, and for completely selfish reasons, I started thinking about the fact that I didn't want to die young. Um, you know, having kids and a wife that I love, I didn't want to die at 63. So um, my wife and I started doing research. Um, we started looking into documentaries like Food Inc. We started reading up um, books on living a more plant-based diet. But the more I moved away from meat, I noticed there was an obvious thing that happened. The more I was able to see the world um, the way it is, the, the more my eyes really were open. Um, I could see things in a new light, and I stopped holding on to the illusions that I think most people go through life with. Out there somewhere, um, there's these happy animals that die of old age, and that's what we're eating. There's no pain, there's no suffering, everything's done in, in some perfect fashion. Um, and so I, I started to start thinking about groups that I'd heard about, like PETA, our farm, where the notion is that they wanted to put, you know, animals in Congress and have a pig president, and that that was really what these people stood for. Um, and then I read a book called Eating Animals, and I watched a documentary called Earthlings. And it was the very day that I decided that I was not going to ever do that again, that I would be vegan. Um, and from that moment forward, it was as if my one reality of truth had been entirely replaced by a whole new reality. And unfortunately, that reality wasn't as bright and shiny as the old reality. Um, animals were not dying of old age on happy farms. They were, they were herded like miserable wretches into dark sheds to lead lives that seem unfathomable to the mind. And the truth is truly too ugly to be possible, and yet in almost every way it's worse than we could ever imagine. Even if we create our worst case scenarios, we can't imagine how bad it is. So what does one do with such information? Some people flip the switch back off. They keep doing what they've always done. They might cut, off, uh, cut back or they might stop eating animals for, or animal products for a while, but eventually the brain does this amazing thing where it protects its own identity. It can't quite face the unpleasant reality that, they, that these kinds of things exist in the world and that you've been participating in it. And so, you know, it pushes back that entrenched thought, it can't be that bad. There's no way it can be that bad. And even to this day, you find yourself thinking there's no way it's that bad, even when you know it is. Unfortunately for me, I'm not one of those people that can say, I'm just going to flip off the switch. 
And that very moment, I knew that you know I, I had to do something. And so at the time, um, I thought I would gently try to expose people to the truth. And as anyone who's ever tried to spread something that you know is true and most people don't, you quickly find out that people don't want to know the truth. They don't want to be exposed to it, especially if it means that it's going to force them to make a moral decision and make a change in their life and have to judge things that they've done in the past. And I don't think that you necessarily have to judge yourself for what you've done before you knew things. But we're living in a world where injustices um, are out there, and I think we need to face them um, we, instead of running from them. It'd be like millions of people starving, or like the fact that millions of people are starving around the world, or like when slavery existed and it was just allowed to happen, it was just easier to say, this is normal, this is how the world is, we just have to accept it, and this will let me go through life conveniently. But in my heart, I felt like I would be dying just to hold back and, and to know this was happening, to let them suffer. And in part, it's being bullied by a world where we want everyone to conform. The world eats animals, we ignore their suffering, and it's the vegan's job to be silent and to wait for the world to figure out that there's injustice on their own. And then another part of me is just an in, uh, introvert. Um, I'm intimidated at the idea of being scorned or hated. But the true moment of clarity was when I realized that I'd rather be hated universally, and I'd rather put myself in danger of having people want to cause me harm than to exist in a world where I had to be silent in the face of such injustice. Um, I often think of my favorite part in the book Huckleberry Finn, where Huckleberry Finn decides that he would rather go to hell than betray his friend Jim, the slave who's trying to escape. It's much like that. You get to the point where you're like, if I have to be quiet, I'm better off dead than living with this inside of me. Not long after this, I met Michelle um, with the Smithfield Pig Save. Um, we heard about it, and I'll never forget the first time I saw the truck go by loaded with the living pigs, knowing that they would probably be dead within 24 hours. And as torturous as that truck ride can be for those pigs, in the heat of summer or in the freezing cold of winter, in some sad, horrific way, those terror-filled moments, suffering on that truck, wondering probably what was going to happen, that was probably the best moments of those pigs' life. Um, these pigs primarily live in tight quarters where very little movement's um, allowed. Often they go insane from being in such tight quarters without stimulation, so they'll chew on the bars or throw around imaginary hay as if there was hay there you know, where there's not. And it would be no different than if we took our every three-year-old child in our country or a dog and put them in a tiny little crate for the same amount of time. They would go insane. Um, and that's about the intelligence level of a pig, they say, as a three-year-old child or sometimes older. I can't imagine how unendurable that suffering would be to have to do what these animals do. And it's millions and millions of them all the time going through this. So looking into the eyes of these beautiful, intelligent creatures as they drove by, leading to their cruel slaughter, ahead where they had to watch, usually, the, the pig in front of them go to their fate, to hear them squeal, to know what's happening because they are conscious of this, to know it's about to happen to them, to know that that was going on, and to know that sometimes they don't die when they're first on the first attempt and they're boiled alive and to have their, their hair removed so that they can be processed. So looking into the eye of these poor pigs as they drive by, I had to ask myself, and I've asked myself this many times, how do you move forward living in that kind of world, haunted every moment by the fact that you know these millions and millions of pigs, billions and billions of animals are going through this fate and worse? And the easy answer is you never really are able to do it in a way that's you know soothing or calming. But on the other hand, I think that being said, by speaking out, by trying to be a voice for the animals, by letting people know that I'm not going to let that be the future um, for these animals, I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. Like, it is truly the greatest thing, the greatest choice I've ever made, and the most at peace with being alive that I've ever felt. If I can save one pig from the fate of being stuck in that, you know, the gestation crate, 
or on that truck headed to slaughter, if I can make the smallest change in the world, then I'll die happy um, in whatever way it has to be. Because when people ask, do I ever worry about my safety, when I point out the injustices that people do, knowing that someone might take out their guilt for what they're doing on me physically by trying to harm or kill me, this seems like a real concern to most people. And it is a concern, but to me, the alternative is a hell unimaginable. Knowing what is happening in this world and remaining silent while these animals are raised for meat, eggs, or dairy, and suffering these fates that even the most evil of people would cringe at the thought of. Well, that's a living death far worse than anything I can imagine. I was dying a little every day while I was being silent until I decided that I would be silent no more.